Humans are creatures of habit. You can't get rid of your bad habits, but you can change them to be better habits. Habits that would improve your life, or at least wouldn't harm you. The process of developing habits takes a long time, but today we're going to do something different. We're going to focus on small habits that you can easily adapt right now. They're not going to take you a lot of time, yet they'll be very, very effective. The moment I started implementing these habits financially, I started doing a lot better, which is why I'm going to share with you my 10 small money habits that you should start doing right now. So let's start with the first one. Don't use cash. Now, I might get some criticism for this, but hear me out. The greatest financial habit you can ever develop is tracking your expenses. Because when you know exactly how you're spending your money, it's much easier to change your behavior. If you're spending too much on eating out, the next time you'll be more careful before buying lunch rather than preparing it. The easiest way to track your expenses is to pay with a debit card. Every transaction is recorded on your phone and you can revisit your transactions every day to see if you're overspending. Which brings me to point two. Spend five or 10 minutes every night to audit your spendings an hour or two before you go to bed. Pick up your phone, open your banking app, and take a look at how much you've spent today. This might help you realize that you've overspent on food today, which will push you to be more careful next time you're buying a meal. Or maybe you've spent too much on Uber, and you have to minimize your expenses for the next few days so that you're not in credit card debt at the end of the month. People usually act when it's too late, when they've already run out of money, so they're forced to get into debt. But then they repeat the same mistake over and over until they find themselves buried in a lot of debt. Number three is set a budget for everything. What most people do is work hard, save money. They might even save for six months worth of expenses, but then they'll go on something like a vacation. And while they're on vacation, of course they want to enjoy themselves. They realize they have all that money that they don't need urgently. Why not spend some of it? I mean, you'll get back to work in a week or two and make it all back, right? But then you come home and you're hit with bills and unavoidable expenses, which stop you from saving. So to avoid overspending or withdrawing from your savings account, always set a strict budget and never differ from it. Number four is automate your investments. If you're not into investing, like your job isn't directly related to the stock market or real estate, you probably don't have time to analyze companies, but look for real estate deals or stay up to date with financial news. That's why you watch people like me who try to summarize everything in short videos. But here's a life hack. You can't always look for the next opportunity and you don't simply want to keep your savings in cash because you might end up losing out to inflation or spending on unnecessary things. So choose a few stocks or maybe one index fund and dollar cost average, which means every week or month you invest in that stock without analyzing a new company. I know that you've probably heard the age old saying, buy low, sell high, but you don't know where the low is and you don't know where the high is. So just invest every week and you'll hit the top, you'll hit the bottom, so you'll dollar cost average at the end of the day. And you're not gonna waste your time looking for opportunities, which means you're finally gonna start investing instead of just watching others invest. Number five is negotiate wherever you can. You can't negotiate when you're in the grocery store, for example, since prices are fixed. And if you don't like it, no one cares. But there's plenty of stores where there is room for negotiation, whatever you're buying. If it's possible to negotiate, always do it. Whether you're in a job interview trying to get a higher salary or buying a house, you might put yourself in an uncomfortable position, but imagine for a moment, if you get a slightly better deal, if you get a 5 or 10% raise, that extra 5 or 10% means you can now save more money. And if you count the opportunity cost, which means how much that extra 5 or 10% is going to be worth in the long run, then you just saved yourself a fortune. Number six is always check the lower shelves. Supermarkets or stores in general have long ago analyzed your height and carefully placed the most expensive items at your eye level so that you come across them first. If you take a look at the lower shelves, prices are generally a bit cheaper because that's where they place the most affordable items since they know that most people aren't going to look at them. But you can outsmart them by taking a moment and checking what's down there. Usually, the products aren't much different from the ones on the top. Eye level shelves at stores usually hold items that cost a fortune and the companies who are willing to pay that much usually include that cost in the price of their product. So you're basically paying for not looking down. Number seven is don't brag about how much money you have or make. People have the tendency to expect more from people who make more money. If you get them a little present on their birthday, they won't like you. But if they think that you're not a rich dude and you can barely make ends meet, then they'll be happy that you even got them a little gift. I know it sounds horrible, but it's human nature. If you're rich, people expect more from you. Number eight is surround yourself with like-minded people. 
It's very difficult to live frugally trying to get financially free as soon as possible when your friends enjoy expensive meals, expensive vacations, and $5 coffees. Sometimes you even wonder if it's worth saving all that money. So, in order to keep yourself motivated, surround yourself with people of similar goals. Join the FIRE movement on Reddit, join the chat rooms, share the different tools and techniques you use to save money. It really helps to know that you're not alone in this journey. Number 9 is avoid cheap shoes. Now, this might be a bit strange to hear because we're talking about saving money and being frugal, yet here I am telling you to never buy another pair of cheap shoes, or in fact clothes. But what does cheap or expensive mean? If you buy a pair of cheap shoes that are going to last you a month or two, then I call that expensive. It was a waste of money. But if you spend slightly more, and these shoes last you say a few years, I call that the ultimate way to save money. Whenever you buy clothes or shoes, ask yourself, how long will this pair of shoes or this shirt last me? I'd rather spend a bit more money on a pair of shoes that will last me years than replace my shoes four times a year. And finally, number 10. Think twice before paying. I used to waste a lot of money and then a few minutes or hours later, I would ask myself, why on earth did I buy that? I don't need it. It happens to all of us. So I've promised myself to think for a minute before paying for something, even if it's something I've wanted to buy for a long time. I ask myself, do I really need that or is it just retail therapy? And the answer is quite often the latter. Try it, but don't be biased. Try to think about it independently. There you have it, the 10 money habits that will fast track your financial success. Thank you for watching. If this video has provided you any sort of value, please like and subscribe.